This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. The fast-moving ryegrass coulee fire turned Vantage into a ghost town Tuesday. Residents in Vantage and campers at Wanapum State Park were forced to evacuate early Tuesday morning due to the ryegrass coulee fire. Grant County Commissioners have named an interim director for the Grant County Fairgrounds. Caden Jenks was the face of Royal Football for several years. A four-year starter at quarterback, Jenks made his mark in Royal Football history. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. The fast-moving ryegrass coulee fire turned Vantage into a ghost town Tuesday. The 1,600-acre fire broke out at around 11 p.m. Monday night and created a two-mile-long firewall that was fanned by winds of over 40 miles an hour. At one point in the overnight, the fire threatened 140 homes, 105 of them primary residences, and 35 of them seasonal. 120 people left in the middle of the night and throughout the morning. But the fire didn't face homeowners like Tom Powell, who opted to stay despite the danger. I wanted to see if I could stop it. And how does that work exactly when you're told to leave but you don't want to leave? What? How does that exchange go down? He just looked at me funny and go, okay, you know, what can you say? I mean, you couldn't force me out. So... Kittitas Valley Fire and Rescue Chief John Sinclair says crews from across the state have been combating the blaze and fire activity has been reduced drastically as a result. My guess is that containment will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% contained by the end of today. Uh, they're going to try and wrap it up so that we can repopulate Vantage and down Huntsinger Road and uh, then the areas that are out on the northwest side um, where it's burning towards the wind towers probably tomorrow before they get that contained. Sinclair says the aerial attack on the blaze allowed crews to get a handle on it, but fighting the fire from the air was no easy task, says DNR wildfire pilot Colby Hammond. So the wind really uh, has been, you know, the, the turbulence around the topography, um, power management, um, and then also trying to hit the spot with the water um, being blown away from where you're trying to drop it on the fire. Okay, and that was the most difficult part. Yep, yep, that was probably the most difficult today. Only one outbuilding burned in the fire. The cause of it remains unknown. I'm Sean Goggins for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Change doesn't have to be complicated. With a low-profile microwave hood combination that's ready to install right out of the box. It fits in the same space as your under-cabinet hood, so you can get your microwave off the countertop and make space for the routines worth keeping. The Low Profile Microwave Hood Combination, from the number one selling appliance brand in the USA. Whirlpool Appliances, now available at More Furniture in Ephrata. Residents in Vantage and campers at Wanapum State Park were forced to evacuate early Tuesday morning due to the Ryegrass Coulee Fire. A Red Cross shelter was established at George Community Hall at about 6 a.m. Red Cross volunteers say between 10 and 15 people utilized the shelter before many left and headed back to Vantage, hoping to return home. Fire officials say about a total of 120 people were evacuated due to the blaze. Carrie Meyer said he and his wife Becky were staying at Wanapum State Park when they were evacuated at about 3.30 a.m. We got evacuated from Wanapum State Park at 3.30 in the morning because of a wild grass fire. And now we're here at the Red Cross Station in George. You wake up, look out the front door of your trailer, and within a quarter mile, you can see flames. And a lot of flames are you know, in the dark. You can see smoke firemen all over the place. Meyer says they left their trailer at the park, grabbed some of their belongings, and were escorted along with other campers across Wanapum Dam. The about 1,000-acre fire caused Interstate 90 to be shut down for several hours before it was reopened around noon. John Sinclair, chief with Kittitas Valley Fire and Rescue, said the fire has burned on both the north and south side of I-90. Sinclair said one small structure was destroyed, but firefighters have been able to protect other structures. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by...
Your taste buds bored? Well then bring them to Jay's Teriyaki. Not only does Jay's have a variety of teriyaki dishes, they also offer mouth-watering salads and sides. Call Jay's 509-764-5155. Jay's Teriyaki, located at 123 East Broadway in Moses Lake. Because it's all in the sauce. Grant County Commissioners have named an interim director for the Grant County Fairgrounds. Grant County Commissioners announced the selection of Jim McKiernan on Tuesday following the resignation of former director Mickey Webb in May. McKiernan will serve as director through the fair in August until the county has completed a formal hiring process for the permanent director position. McKiernan previously worked as an advertising director for a local newspaper and sales manager of Jensen Farms Produce in Warden. He is currently an administrative supervisor with ITC Services in Moses Lake. McKiernan served on the Fair Advisory Committee in 2010 and 2011, and commissioners say he has first-hand knowledge of the Grant County Fair. The Grant County Fair is set to return August 14th through August 18th. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. Caden Jenks was the face of Royal Football for several years. A four-year starter at quarterback, Jenks made his mark in Royal Football history when he led his team to back-to-back -back undefeated seasons and state titles his junior and senior year. Jenks graduated in 2016 and spent last season redshirting for Weber State University, a solid FCS program that made the college playoffs last season. It was good. It provided a lot of opportunity to learn and uh, gain experience in just how college football works and learn what it takes exactly to be successful. That's one thing we value down there is hard work and we know that you don't win or be successful or get to where we want to be if you're not working hard. Weber State has plenty of quarterbacks to go around. Since last season starter Stephon Cantwell graduated, there's now a competition for the starting job. Uh, well, they're all great guys first off. Weber State does a great job recruiting and they know the type of people that they want there. And uh, I love them all. We get to hang out all the time and they're all good guys, but it's still a competition at the end of the day and we all understand that, but we don't let it get in the way. I want to be the starting quarterback. That's just how it is. I'm a competitor. I want to get out there and compete. Although far from home, Jenks' love for Royal football hasn't faded, especially since his younger brother, Sawyer Jenks, took the reins as starting quarterback after Caden's graduation. Oh, you have to, no doubt. I'm watching every Friday night and listening to it on the radio. He's just uh, putting the work and he's finally starting to get to where he needs to be as a player and as a person. I'm proud of him. Weber's first game of the season will be on August 30th when they travel to Salt Lake City to battle the University of Utah. I'm Am Chikoski for iFiber One Sports. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, Visit us online at ifiber1.com or check us out on Facebook.